Hey there, this is the Brosis Effect. I'm Nicole, this is my brother Michael, and we are back with another reaction video. We are going to watch the last two videos for the Cynical Critic. They are titled, Why All Animation Is For Kids, and Why The Paradox Files Is An Underrated Masterpiece. Hey everyone, I'm your host, The Cynical Critic. And I'm Antonio, your other Cynical Critic. So big announcement, my friend Antonio is back in town and decided to join the channel as my new co-host. And I am so excited to be here. Me and Mark actually go way back. I'm actually the one that gave you the nickname Cynical Critic. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, today we're gonna to be talking about animated TV shows and movies Interesting. and animation in general. And more specifically, how all animation is inherently for kids, and you have all been tricked into thinking otherwise. Today, anime movies make billions of dollars, more than they used Whoa. to. Whoa! Hold on there, Mark. I think you're forgetting about something. Oh, right. So, today's video is sponsored by Happy Meat Farms. Happy Meat Farms is an animal farming company that offers a wide variety of different delicious meat products. There are so many farming companies out there that put thousands of animals into tight, unlivable spaces and pump them full of GMOs. But Happy Meat Farms is a humane and organic alternative. Every animal has plenty of wide, outdoor, open space for them to roam free. There's no preservatives or additives. They're just 100% organic, all natural, the way God intended. To learn more about them and what they stand for, you can go to happymeatfarms.com. We're so thankful that they chose to sponsor us. Now, on with the video. What the actual heck? Today, animated movies make billions of dollars more than they used to because they're not just targeting kids anymore. They're pretending to be these realistic, mature movies for adults. But come on, animation as a storytelling medium inherently makes everything more silly and childish. There are many studios guilty of trying to trick so their audiences, now. but the biggest offender is Pixar. They're obviously just kids' movies. I mean, when you have talking fish, talking cars, talking toys. It's clear who the film is intended for. One of the few studios out there that actually understands that animation is only for kids movies is Disney. For the longest time, all their animated movies were only meant for children. There was no manipulative marketing that made you think the movie was anything more than a dumb, fun, immature movie for kids. But now Disney's starting to re-release these animated classics to a wider audience. And so they realize that no adult wants to watch animation. So, they cleverly remake them in live action. If you compare these remakes to the originals, you can clearly see how much more emotional depth and realism that live action adds to the movie. Now when I watch The Lion King, I don't feel like I'm watching some baby movie with talking animals. I feel like these things are happening in real life and I can finally connect emotionally with these characters. Take a scene like Simba finding Mufasa dead, for example. In the live action movie, it feels like a real lion just died. There is no suspension of disbelief. I can clearly feel the full emotional weight that the movie intended. But in the original animated version, there's no way for anyone above the age of 11 to take it seriously. It's literally just a drawing. I mean, it's impossible for me to empathize with the characters. I disagree. Take a look at this drawing yeah, that Mark drew when he was a, a kid. Just because it's got for big sure. eyes, that doesn't make you want to sympathize he or He drew for the that! Where did you get that? I mean, honestly, I hope every animated he movie gets a live action remake. Just so they can stop this boring form of storytelling. Don't you agree, Mark? Uh, yeah. Oh, that was something. <laughs> Took me a second there. So, in recent years, there have been a lot more of these uh, adult animated TV shows, quote unquote. And what they'll do is they'll put in a bunch of language and edgier and darker themes and blood. But just because you put blood and curse words in a kid's show doesn't make it less of a kid's show. Rick and Morty, BoJack Horseman, and Invincible are all examples of animated shows that are supposedly for adults, but they all contain the same childish elements from Pixar like fantasy, magical adventures, and even talking animals. 
Now these would be perfect shows for kids to watch, but they have to ruin it with a bunch of edgy swear words and mundane drama. So there's no way that kids can view it. It's completely ruined for them. Do they really expect us to care about a talking horse's drinking problems or a sick mother who can't afford health insurance? Maybe it's worth in live action, but these aren't the types of stories that work for animation. Did you just hear that? A sick mother so who can't afford kids, health insurance? But they also aren't for adults. Yeah, a call to him and he looks like he is looking down as well from that, you're right. He's being manipulated Mark, by this for? guy. See? Um, Look at him. <clears throat> They're for adult man babies who never grow up and want to pretend like they don't still watch kids shows. He's reading off a script that, that he doesn't myself. want to say. <laughs> That's all we have for today. Hopefully we could change some of your minds, but I'm sure there's going to be tons of hate comments, like always. Um, make sure to hit the bell icon for notifications and also to like and subscribe for future videos. And thank you so much to Happy Meat Farms for sponsoring us. You can check them out at happymeatfarms.com. We've been your host, The Cynical Critics, and we're not going anywhere. Stay cynical! That is creepy. What? Interesting. That was freaking creepy. Yeah, that was some... Okay, so... We thought Anthony was missing. This guy obviously looks the same, but is being called Antonio. Okay, I didn't realize... I didn't remember if it was... Yeah, you're right, because it was Anthony. So now he's Antonio. And he was acting just really weird. He was yeah, very... Yeah, he was like, we're not going creepy. anywhere. Yeah, and he like was, like, smiling like... and staring at Mark. He kept bringing up things. So he brought up Sonk the Blue Rat. He brought up his mother's insurance. And he kept saying things to kind of, like, continually blackmail or manipulate Mark. And then Mark, you could see, getting more physically upset to the point where he read that statement off a script that he didn't want to say. You can tell he doesn't even agree with the video he's making. Yeah, and I, I mean, he just took him off guard. Like, it's really getting them. He's definitely being, like, held captive in a way. Like, he just is being forced to do it. Maybe they have... He has to do whatever he can to save his mother. Maybe they're, that's they're probably him. what it is. Yeah. He's being blackmailed. I think Anthony, if he's under the influence of the muse, just like Alex Bale's friend, that girl, and he is getting other people he knows in, in that web, and it's to the point where his friend is scared of him, and he's just like not even probably himself. So I'm wondering, is he really the old Anthony, or is he something different now, and that's why he's being called Antonio? I, I believe that would be a hint towards it. Yeah. They're not going to just forget the name, and that's probably what's happening. You know, people that are actually watching this, like us, are going to notice that. The other question I have is, for some reason, I don't think the muse likes Sonic the Blue Rat. Like, how does that have any relation? And I don't get the correlation with it. Maybe he created it. Maybe he was the creator of Sonic the Blue Rat. I highly doubt it, though, because some of the emails were from Sonic the Blue Rat. Like, hey, good content. Keep it up. Maybe the Sonic the Blue Rat is tied into it somehow. But uh, obviously it is. But maybe it's viewed as a bad thing with the muse. From what I've seen so far and on this video... Antonio holds up the picture of Sonic the Blue Rat and said, you drew this when you were little. And Mark said, "How? where'd you get that? I think Antonio is behind the Sonic the Blue Rat videos. And that's why Mark is getting updates on it and has it as a link. I think maybe Antonio was making them as part of his manipulation of Mark. I mean, that, that's just my guess. I, that's a good theory as well. Um, I'm not sure. I also think it was interesting because obviously this was one of the silliest arguments they've had thus far. I don't think I agreed with pretty much most of the things they said. And I think that was the point. At the end, Antonio, Anthony, whatever you want to call him, literally is like, I know we're going to get hate comments and we're going to keep doing this. Like he wants people to leave hate comments. It's almost like he's begging for them. So that was also interesting. Yeah. And before him, like his videos 
or definitely not as far fetched with like a being so opinionated. Like it, he definitely reached out to like where the, a lot of people would agree, but I don't think anyone's really gonna agree with this. Maybe a few, but mostly hate comments. So. Yeah, who knows? I, I disagree because I've always said how I think cartoons are made so that parents can watch along with their kids and not be dreadfully bored all the time. If you watch any kids show now, or any Disney movie, like it'll have like innuendos, like stuff that you would, only an adult would understand. Let's move on to the next video, which is the one on the Paradox Files. Which I have, we have both never seen before, so. Hey everyone, I'm Guys, host, creepy the Cynical to the right. Critic, and I'm Antonio, your other Cynical Critic. There's me the on the bed. The Files is the latest installment in the yep. popular Paradox franchise. The movie follows Detective Jones and his sidekick Mahoney as they try to hunt down a notorious serial killer. Their investigation leads them down a deep rabbit hole where they discover a secret alien invasion is actually behind the killings. When it came out in 2019, it actually had a pretty harsh critical reception. But today, instead of just being cynical, we're going to discuss how The Paradox Files is actually an underrated masterpiece. Um, <clears throat> he does not the Paradox be franchise here. was created by HMF Entertainment as a way to tell disconnected stories about a sci-fi alien invasion, all while building to a larger cinematic universe. The franchise is also notorious for its creative and mysterious marketing campaign, even going so far as to create alternate reality games to promote the movies. Now it's well known that these movies it's were taken from different scripts and different films that were in development, what and they changed at the last second in order to fit into the Paradox franchise. This is actually a really clever way to incorporate different ideas and voices <laughs> into one franchise, making the original ideas the that even that better. Now, some people have complained that by adding aliens and sci-fi elements to these movies that it made them feel inconsistent and convoluted, but uh, um, that, that is just flat out wrong. Take the Paradox Files, for example. Originally, oh, oh. it was just a basic, they cut out. predictable Did you detective movie called The Murder Files. Yeah, they're We've purposely seen these covering them up. hundreds of times, and we don't need to see another one. So the movies became much better when HMF Entertainment bought the rights to it and had scenes HMF. that explained that yeah, the Paradox friends, aliens yeah. were the ones that were behind the murders. Adding aliens to a gritty crime so drama really subverts the audience's expectations and obviously. provides an experience that's much more engaging than just another boring murder mystery. But unfortunately, people weren't a fan of the changes made by the studio and so this masterpiece of a film got wrongfully hated on with some people even begging the studio to release the original cut i mean come on guys if a studio is going to interfere like he's with like the in movie, physical obviously pain obviously they have a good reason to and from eating that trust meat that the movie's going to be better for it i mean the original murder His files arm. would have been way worse Hey everyone. Oh, so Sorry that was the that. edit. Mark has some family stuff to deal with, so I'm going to be finishing off this episode myself. In conclusion, The Paradox Files is an honestly underrated masterpiece, owing directly to its inclusion in the Paradox franchise. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. I'm sure all you haters will be as toxic as always. I've been your cynical critic. Stay cynical. Okay, because so I thought that original video was like way before that Anthony guy disappeared, but apparently it was this one, which makes more sense now because we did watch it the last last week so yeah our last video we watched what now I realize is that cut so he answers the phone and it cuts to just Anthony there is a little video with a random bunch of letters name that's unlisted but it was what happened when Mark took that phone call 
got it. Um, it makes yeah, sense, so. we we're watching some things not quite in sequence because we're going kind of by creator and as we realize videos that exist, but it's definitely coming together. I really honestly was so focused on all the things going on between them and what Mark was doing that I don't know how much I even grasped on their opinion of the Paradox Files, other than it was really good and shouldn't have been rated so low. That's all they said. And they the murder really explain, cut. Yeah, they didn't really explain too much about it. It was short. They didn't go through the scenes or anything. They're just saying, oh, this, you know, that Happy Meat Farms or H, uh, HMF, HMF Entertainment. Bought, uh, Entertainment bought it. I have a bit more of an idea. So, I mean, we probably all thought maybe this is possibly an alien invasion, but now I'm really starting to think that this is an alien invasion and that they're using people to get what they want and to sponsor happy meat farms and kind of blackmailing people and torturing them to do what they want so they can grow the brand and they can consume food and take over in a weird way. I don't know exactly. That might be a little far-fetched, some of it, but I definitely believe the alien part is accurate, so... Obviously, they're trying to manipulate people to do what they want, and they want their meat. I guess those things are fed meat, so... I mean, it's Happy Meat Farms. They're making a company all about meat, and then their victims or hosts have to eat meat to spread the muses and, and spread whatever the heck they're spreading. So it is highly revolving around meat. We are watching the Cynical Critic video is in order, but it's just weird. Did Anthony ever go missing? Or is he, are these out of order? I'm just a little confused. Also, I'm, I don't know, this is kind of a guess, but we're a little theory outside of this. The people that are creating this, all these videos and like this entire idea, the- Muse ARG. The ARG, that's the word, are vegan. <laughs> because they're so against, you know, consu the consumption of meat. Maybe this oh. is a vegan movement. I don't know. That's a good, no, that's a good theory. I don't know. I probably am wrong, but I just, that's <laughs> what's going through my head. Well, we've watched all the cynical critic videos that at least we know of. If there's any other videos we might have missed that aren't on their actual channel, please let us know and we'll add it to our list. We're now going to move on to some other videos that are tied to this ARG. And I did see Alex Bale released a video. I think it might be talking about why he did the eight SpongeBob theories. So we're going to hold off on watching that till we finish all the other ARG stuff. Because if it's what I think it is, it could explain his reasoning behind everything. And I just don't... I don't want to spoil anything. I don't anything. know if it will, though. That's well, I don't want to take a chance. It's, oh, the title and the thumbnail are intriguing, so we're going to wait and watch that after we've caught up with everything else. If there's any other videos you want us to react to, we're probably going to be focusing on this ARG for a little bit, but after, you know, we, all use, we always keep a list, so just let us know. If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe, and you guys have a nice rest of your day. Or whatever time you're watching this, it could be night or evening, I don't care, but you just have a nice rest of your time of day. Goodbye. Bye!